So we are going to go ahead and start class. It is 940. Um, give me just a second. Can I? I'm going to close the door. Okay, so today we are going to be looking at our homework and going through that. And when I talk about homework, I'm talking about the, we kind of looked over the homework. If you weren't here during that class, if you go back and look through the lecture videos, then you should be able to see those. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch so that you can see my screen. <clears throat> okay, so I kind of changed it up just a little bit. If you go to your weekly assignments, then, you know, we are in week three and five. So if you click on that, instead of having all of them down here at the bottom, um, right now at the top, there's going to be assignments going to say for a grade. Everything in this folder needs to be done for a grade. Okay, so we have the Monopoly transactions, which we did last Tuesday, and then we put them online last Thursday. And then we also, last Thursday, went over some of the homework um, and the different steps in the homework. Um, right now, what I want us to look through, then there's the quiz me. This is a multiple choice. Um, also, some matching. And make sure you look, you get three attempts. The one with the highest grade is going to be used to figure out your final grade. So if you don't get it right the first time, you can go back. And you might not have the exact same questions, but it will be there. Then <clears throat> this is the one that we're going to be looking at right now because this can be a little bit confusing for people who are just now doing it. Um, but it's the end of chapter test. So if you click on this. Hold on, let me go. Is there someone talking or trying to raise their hand? Okay. If you can't get me because when I am on, when you see my screen like this, I can't see that you raised your hand because I'm on the other screen so use the remind me app to contact me if you can't um sign okay so once you hit this the end of chapter test analyzing transactions it's going to open up and it's going to look like this and i made mine smaller for a reason um i need to print stuff out and for some reason it's only going to print out what's on my page so if you click on that, then you can. Um, so you're going to click on Start Assignment Now. And um, hold on. Don't sit there. Sit over here where there's more. Okay. <clears throat> 
So when you click on this and you want to start your assignment now, make sure that you look and you read these things. This will be your first take of this assignment. You're limited to three takes of this assignment. The assignment is due at 11.55 on September the 25th, 20, yeah, 23rd. If you're still taking this assignment when the due date arrives, you'll be given the option to continue working without penalty. Do not use the browser back button, history trail, or refresh button. It will automatically submit. Do not leave the assignment open and inactive for more than two hours. It will automatically submit. Do not close the assignment using the browser's closed tools. After two hours, it will automatically submit. When you're ready to submit the assignment, use the assignment submit button. If the browser crashes or becomes unresponsive and you must manually close it, you will be able to resume the take if you sign back into Cengage now within a few minutes of the crash. If it's more than two hours, it will automatically submit. If you take this assignment, the system will automatically save your work. So as you're working, it's going to be saving it. Okay, so then you click on start assignment. <coughs> All right, the reason that I made my screen smaller is that whenever you print the item, which is right up here, it will only print what is shown on the screen. So I am going to print this. Um, unfortunately, the computer that I'm currently on is not hooked up to a printer, so I have to print from a different computer. But you should be able to print on your computer. But these are the instructions, okay? And this is a mastery problem. So you only have this one problem. I'm going to go ahead and close this little area because I don't have to go from one to two to three to 15 like we did when we were doing the homework. Um, I just have this one problem. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger to give me a little bit more room to play with on this screen, okay? <clears throat> so I want to print the item. So I'm going to click on it and it's preparing it for preview. For some reason, the way I have to do it on this one is that I have to like scale it down to 65% and make it landscape um, in order for it to print, but it is printing to PDF because as I said, for some reason, this, this computer in the lab isn't hooked up. So give me about two minutes, and while you print this out, you, you need to have the instructions printed out in front of you. Um, you don't necessarily have to, but it's going to be a lot easier to do this problem if you have the instructions printed out next to you. Okay, so give me a couple seconds. I'll be right back. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions while I'm doing this? Yeah, I'm here.
Okay, so in a perfect world it would print, but apparently the printer's not working. I don't have my portable printer with me. It kept telling me the MP tray needs paper. So, anyway. <clears throat> Alright, so since we're not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to print this, I'll show you what you can do if you do not have access to a printer. It's a little more complicated, but we can still get through it. <clears throat> I am going to make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is how it comes up. Um, you can pull this down and pull this over to make it cover your whole screen. I'm going to put it back about here so that my instructions are in this little box here. Um, you can also copy it um, and then open a Word document and paste it into your Word document if you know how to do that. And you can switch, but flip between the screens um, if you want that. <clears throat> so I'm going to paste mine right here. Um, and I'm going to delete this because this is a table that doesn't actually make sense when you do it to a Word document. So, all right. Um, so we can have it right here and it's going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit larger that we can follow along. Um, and then if your Word document prints, then you can print this. All right, going back over here. So that is, these are the instructions. This is the meat of our problem. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Now, um, this next tab up here has the accounts, labels, and the amount descriptions. I'm going to move it over here and pull it down so it has all of these. Okay, so this is everything that we're going to be using when we input this problem, when we use these instructions. These are going to, this is basically our um, chart of accounts. Remember the one I was talking about that has account payable, cash, um, the name of the owner and capital, prepaid insurance, supplies, you know, the, that chart of account. This is what this is going to be, but it's also going to be on the income statement, the statement of owner's equity, and the balance sheet. Okay, so, and I'm going to get into those a little later today. So, you can also click this and copy it and put it on a different Word document, a different blank one, and just paste it. And that way you can print it out and it's a little bit bigger as well. So we will be using everything here. Okay, we might use some of them more than once. We might just use them once. So everything that you need is going to be here. If it's not here, I mean, we're not going to make stuff like that. All right, then going back to my Cengage. <clears throat> okay, then right here, this is the actual problem. It's called the accounting equation, 
and you can see here how big it is for one. I'm going to stretch out my screen and I'm going to make this just a little bigger. Well, I apparently jumped from super tiny to amazingly large. <laughs> so we're going to keep it here. Okay. So what you're going to do, um, and I'm going to go back here. And if you click on them, then it brings it forward. But I'm going to close out of these two so that I can see my work here. All right. Um, and if you can see right here, it's labeled with numbers. A through P. Now I'm going to go back to the word where we did the instructions and if you see this is A through P. Okay, so each one of these is going to be a transaction just like we've been doing in class. So for example, Lisa invested cash by making a deposit in the bank account for the business of $8,000. I'm going to go to my chart of accounts and these, this is our chart of accounts up here. Then we have labels, and these are things that we are going to use when we do the reports. And then amount descriptions, this is what we're going to use when we do the reports as well. So for right now, we're just dealing with these, while we actually do the problem, we're just dealing with these um, chart of accounts. So if the instruction, or if the transaction, and we've done these a couple of times, if the transaction is Lisa, okay, so Lisa Vonyak started her own business. We do windows. She offers interior and exterior window cleaning for local area residents. Lisa rents a garage to store her tools and cleaning supplies and has a part-time assistant stand for the phone and handle third story work. Lisa's afraid of heights. The transaction for the month of July are as follows. Okay, so the first one is Lisa invested cash by making a deposit in a bank account for the business of $8,000. Okay, so we've done this a couple of times. Um, with different people, but it's basically the same thing. So which two, and remember we have those four steps when we do any transaction. First, we figure out which accounts are affected. Then we decide if they are, where the normal balance is, where they're increased or decreased, the normal balance on the debit side or the credit side, the left side or the right side. Then we figure out if we go up or if we go down then we figure out if um, where we actually put it. Okay, so for this one, Lisa invested cash by making deposit in bank account for the business. So we're going to go to our chart of accounts, which accounts were affected in that transaction. And I actually went over here to view and put view side by side. And so now I can see my instructions on one side and our chart of accounts on the other. So um, Lisa invested cash by making a deposit in a bank account for the business for $8,000. Which two accounts are affected? Anyone? Okay, well, an asset, remember, assets are the main categories. The chart of accounts are the subcategories. So, yes, okay, so one of them is going to be cash. Okay, uh, so we have she invested cash, so one of them is going to be cash. What is the other account? Accounts payable. We're paying someone we owe. I mean, no. Um, okay, so this is where this, you know, this is owner's equity because when you have Lisa invested, that means she took money out of her personal account and put it into the business. That's going to be. Lee, that's going to be the owner and then capital. 
okay whenever the money that's in the business gets taken out to give to the owner for personal investment that's drawing but it has to go from the company to personal or from personal to the company that's when we use the um, name of the owner and capital or drawing accounts okay <clears throat> so in this case it's going to be cash and Lisa Vonyak Capital. And it's going to be for $8,000. So let's go back to our um, right here. Okay, so we're looking at this. This is the row for cash. This is the row for accounts receivable. This is the row for supplies. This is the row for prepaid insurance. If it doesn't affect these accounts, then it's going to be zero. So right now we're going to put $8,000 here. And then because we have nothing, because it says nothing to do with accounts receivable, we're going to put a zero. Nothing to do with supplies, we're going to put a zero. Nothing to do with prepaid insurance, we're going to put a zero. Or tools, we're going to put a zero. And it's not even keeping there. I mean, so it's not, so you can put it in. Liabilities, nothing. Okay, capital right here. We're going to put in that other $8,000. Okay, and then put the description and um, I'm going to see if I can just copy and paste it from the instructions. Invested cash. If it's red, it means it's wrong. Like if I had put $8,000 here and hit the tab, <clears throat> well, in the description, it's okay. For right now, I'll leave that blank. I'll come back to that. All right, if you're not sure, you can check my work. I would wait a couple before you do this. But um, the basic question must be answered when analyzing the effects of business transaction to the accounting equation. So you can see right here that there is a green arrow or a green check mark on both these, which means that they are correct. Um, make, certain, make certain you understand the event and it's just telling you feedback on check your work. Um, I think you get three times of this and it's telling you as you go through right here points you got 45 point out of 61. Okay so here we've done one on our instructions. So for me I'm just going to highlight it and I like a little draw through, strike through it, so that I know that I've done it. Or you can highlight it so that you know that you've done it. If you haven't, if you haven't printed it out, if you've printed it out, then you can just draw a line through it or put a check mark by it or something that helps you know where you are just in case you have to leave. You know, we all think that we have time and all the time in the world and all of a sudden your husband calls you and you have to drink, bring him lunch or, you know, he needs you to run to the post office box or you you know, something like that happened. So I just like to know where I am in the thing. So right now we paid rent for July of $150. So the first step, which accounts are going to be affected? Paid rent for July. Rent expense. And then what do we use to pay the rent expense? Cash. So we have rent expense and cash. I don't know if you can hear him, but I have one of my students is in the in here and he is answering the questions. I'm not just not giving you time to answer. <laughs> okay, so rent expense and cash. So now let's go back to our problem. And cash is going to be, how much was that again? 
$150. Okay, so cash is going to be a negative amount. So it's going to be minus 150. And if you do minus 150, it's going to be in parentheses. Okay. Um, and then all these others are zeros, but as we put them in there, it takes it away. So we don't have to put the zeros in there. So we're going to come over here to expenses. All right. And for this one, because we're still kind of in chapter one, chapter two, excuse me, we don't have to differentiate between the different types of expenses, except we know that it's a rent expense. All right. So we're going to put that 150 there. And I'm not sure if it's negative or positive. So I'm going to check my work. You don't check your work. Okay. Yeah. So it's negative on the cash, but expenses, we're just going to have them. All expenses are negative. So we don't have to have, I mean, it's taking money out. So we don't have to have it with a negative because a negative plus a negative equals a positive. Anyway, if you remember anything from algebra, which I don't. So, um, but so that's what it is. I, know, I try to forget as much about algebra as I possibly can. Um, so we know that this is true. Okay. Then it wants the description. So I'm just going to say paid rent. I don't know. I'll get back with y'all on what that actually wants. Okay. Um, and if it's even necessary, because it might not be necessary. Okay. So we have done that. That's the only two accounts that were affected. So we're going to go back to the instructions. And I'm going to cross it out. Okay, so now we're on C. So do you kind of get how this is flowing? It kind of looks confusing, but it's super not. Okay, it's just the same thing that we've been doing it in a different format. Um, purchased a used van for cash for $5,000. So let's look at our chart of accounts. Okay. So which two accounts are we going to be using? Cash. Any specific supply? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know if y'all would catch that. Okay. So we have a van and we have um cash okay so those are going to be two accounts now cash we know is always an asset it always increases on the debit and decreases on the credit side and right now in this one for this chapter for this assignment that's not going to matter as much because we're just doing pop minus and negative on it. So we purchased a used van for $5,000. Okay, so the two that we're using is cash and the van. Cash, like I said, is an asset. The van is going to be an asset as well because remember assets are things that someone tells assets are things that we own. Liabilities are things that we O and owner's equity is the overall business, the worth of the business, all the expenses, all the revenues, all the sales, what is the worth of the business? So things that we owe, liabilities, but we know we can pay them off. Okay. Things that we own, assets, and the worth of the business. And then revenue, what's another name for revenues? Sales, sales, fees, revenues are the way that we make money, all the streams in which we make money. And then expenses are things that we owe that never stops. They keep going and going and going. Someone give me an example of an expense. 
the electric bill. You can pay it every single month and you will never own the electric company. <laughs> if you stop paying your bill, they stop giving you electricity. That's the only transaction. So liabilities have a limit. LL, liabilities have a limit. Expenses are eternal. <laughs> e -E. Anyway, okay. So we purchased the van for cash. We own the van and we paid for cash so it's not on credit or anything so we don't owe anything on it we just paid for it in cash so five thousand dollars we purchased it so let's go back to our account so we use cash so once again it's a negative amount we paid it out we now have five thousand dollars less of cash and then over here on the van we're just going to put a plus, we're not going to put a negative on it. I'm actually not going to put negatives on anything except for the cash, positives or negatives. The rest of these I'm just going to keep as positives. Okay, so it's negative because we paid out the cash, but we got $5,000 worth of van. Does that make sense? Okay, um, and then I'm going to check my work because y'all don't have to, <laughs> just to make sure we're on the right page. Okay, so we've done C, so now we're going to go in our instructions. I'm going to mark this off. And go to D. Purchase tools on account from Clean Tools for six hundred dollars. So which two or which accounts are we going to be using? Purchase tools on account. Well, tools is going to be one of them, but we didn't use cash on this one because it has this word on account. it's going to be accounts payable because we're basically owing them money. Okay, it's like using a credit card. Put this on my account. So we bought tools, so we did get tools, but we didn't pay cash for it. So because we owe that money, because we need to pay out that money, it's going to be accounts payable. And if we were doing this on our actual chart of accounts, it would be accounts payable dash clean tools because you're going to have more than one. It's like having a MasterCard and a Discover card. You would want to know which one is owed to where. So that's why we have maybe different accounts payables. So accounts payable dash clean tools and accounts payable dash, you know, Sawyer's tree cutting service, <coughs> just like we would might maybe have more than one accounts receivable because we might have more than one company that owes us, you know, that we're going to receive money from. So but for now, we're just going to do accounts payable. Now, what is the category of a pay what is the mother father category of accounts payable? Is it an asset, a liability, or owner's equity? And think about what it is. What is what is accounts payable? It means that we owe them money. We haven't paid them cash yet, right? So. Is it, it's something that we owe, so it's going to be a liability or an expense. Does it have an end or does it not have an end? It is going to be a liability because once we pay off that $600, it's done. I mean, there's a limit, there's an end to that. Okay, so we are going to put tools and accounts payable. So let's go to our Right over here, we're not going to do anything in cash because um, we didn't do anything there. Um, we're going to put tools. How much was that for? Okay, $600. So we're going to put $600 because we did purchase $600 worth of tools. And so that is an asset because we own those tools now. 
and then um, accounts payable for that same 600. And I'm going to check my work. Don't do yours because I think, like I said, you only have, but see, see how I'm getting these check marks? And what I would do is make do up to F and then hit check my work and see, as, you know, make kind of as you're going through, maybe a third and then check it and then a third and check it. That way you don't get through the whole thing and figure out that you did one wrong, you know, the beginning wrong. Okay. Um, bless you. All right, so now we are on to E. So let's go back to our instructions. I'm going to cross out C. Okay, purchase cleaning supplies that cost $300. Okay, pay $200 cash and we'll pay the balance next month of $100. Now, I don't think we ever did one of these in class, but remember I said that every transaction has at least two accounts. This one is gonna have three. Okay, because we purchase cleaning supplies. So we now own supplies. Okay, so supplies is going to be one of them. And we own $300 worth of supplies. So I'm actually going to do this in a couple parts because I want to get that out of the way. Okay, so I'm going over here to supplies. And I, Probably the hardest thing for me when I'm doing these is trying to make sure that I have it on the right line <laughs> because, you know, it's super little. Anyway, okay, so we have $300 worth of supplies. Nothing about the rest of that is going to change that. So I'm going to put $300 in my supply account on line E. Okay, so this is where it gets kind of tricky. Okay, we paid $200 cash and we'll pay the balance next month. So what does that tell us? Well, we are going to pay $200 in cash. So we have the cash with negative $200. Okay, so I'm putting that back over here as a negative 200 in my cash. But that's not the only thing that happened in there. We purchased cleaning supplies. We paid $200 of the $300 and we still owe $100. So what's the other account? Which accounts do we use if we owe money? What do we call that? We just dealt with it last time. If we pay it next month, that basically means it's on account, right? We paid credit for it. We we're going to pay cash and we'll pay 100 next month, which means that we still owe it, but there is a final date. So it makes it a liability because we'll pay it off next month in date. Okay, so that means that the other balance is going to be accounts payable. Like this one would be accounts payable for clean tools. This one would be accounts payable um, for whoever we bought the cleaning supplies for. All right, so right here, accounts payable, we are going to put again, $100. Okay, because every side of the balance has to equal so if this, if our assets, remember assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So our asset amount has to equal the other two, liabilities plus owner's equity. So if you see right here is our equal on our equation. All of these are assets. This is liabilities. This is owner's equity. So the assets is 300 minus 200 to give us 100, which equals what we have on this side of the equation. Does that make sense? Because assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And in this case, we got $300 worth of an asset, but we spent $200 worth of an asset, and then we put $100 on accounts payable. So that one is a little, um, 
a little bit more advanced because there's three accounts that we're using instead of just the two. But that's how we do that. And that's the one that normally has possibly more than two transactions is when we pay some of it in cash and we put some of it on account. That's the one that normally has more than two transact or two um, categories, two classes, chart of accounts. All right, so we are going to go to the next one. <clears throat> All right, so in this one, paid part-time assistant, which is another word for wages, for the first half of the month for $100. So which two are we dealing with? And let's pull up our chart of accounts. So we paid part-time assistant for the first half of the month. So what do we pay them? Cash, okay? Paid cash for part-time assistant. You kind of have to infer that we paid cash. So cash is going to be one of them. And then we look at our chart and see something that looked like it might match. So we paid the wages. I mean, there has to be a reason they put wages here, right? So why don't we call that wages expense? Okay, so this is that we know in our problem, it doesn't really differentiate between expenses in this problem. So we just need to know that it's an expense. All right, so we go over to our problem and this is F and that amount was $100. All right, so we are going to do a negative $100 because we paid it so that's going to come out of our, and then the other one is the expense account. So I'm just hitting tab and that takes me from one field to the next. And so I'm just going to put $100 here. Okay. So, and I'm going to check my work. You don't, like I said, you don't have to. But it was cash. We paid the cash. It was negative. And then, like I said, on the, all these other ones, I'm not going to do negatives, just it's going to be, you know, straight. So the next one is G. I'm going to cross this off. Is everyone with me so far? Okay. Paid for advertising, $75. So we know we have cash, okay, because anytime it says paid, you're going to, unless it says on account or on credit or next month, we'll pay next month. If there's nothing that indicates that we're not paying it right now, then it's going to be cash automatically. Okay, paid for advertising, paid cash for advertising. Okay, paid to your premium for liability insurance on van. So that's going to be cash. Received cash from clients. Sometimes it straight out says received cash. It's going to be um, cash. Performed cleaning services for clients is on account. That means we're not going to get paid now. So we're not using cash because we didn't get cash. They owe us cash sometimes. Paid phone bill, that's going to be cash. Received cash, that's going to be cash. Paid part-time manager, that's going to be cash. <laughs> Made partial payment on tools, that's going to be cash. Earned additional revenues amounting to 800, 600 in cash, 200 on account, that's going to be partially cash, partially accounts receivable. Verniac withdrew cash, that's going to be cash. Okay, so you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> cash is almost every single one, unless it says specifically on account or on credit or we'll pay next month. Okay, so, uh, you know, for the most part, most of these are going to be dealing in cash. So paid for advertising, $75. So I'm going to put negative $75 in cash. Okay, because I know that we paid it, it's going to be negative. All right, paid for advertising, $75. So let's look at my chart of accounts. Advertising is that one. Advertising expense. So it's going to be an expense. So that right there tells us where we're going with this next problem. Okay, so we're going to come over here to expenses and do 75. Okay. 
Okay, and that brings us to the next 2H. Okay, someone read it and tell me. Yes, okay, so which two accounts are we dealing with? Negative or positive in cash? Correct. Okay, so negative 480 in cash. Okay, pay to your premium for liability insurance on van. So let's see what our options are. Let's go here to our chart of accounts. Um, it's talking about liability insurance on van. So we are actually paying for insurance. Okay. So let's see what it has about insurance over here. What's our other account? But we didn't use it all right now because it's paid for two years in advance. So we only expense it as we use it. So for, okay, and this is a little bit more advanced than what we're doing now, but we would basically take that $400 and divide it by 24, which is two years. Um, every, you know, there's 12 months in a year. So for two years, there'd be 24. So we would take that $480 and we would expense 480 divided by 24. We're not getting into that now, okay? But that's how we would expense it. So right now we've paid two year premium in advance. So insurance over here, it's going to be prepaid insurance because it actually, if you look, it doesn't give us an insurance account, an insurance expense. So that's not even one of our options. You have to use the, chart, the chart of account that you're given. And the one that deals with is prepaid insurance. So we're going to go back to our problem and look to see which line is prepaid insurance. And prepaid insurance is actually an asset because we own two years worth of prepaid insurance. And we're only gonna expense it out as we use it. So we expense out 480 divided by 24 each month. So that's a small amount of that each month. But it's an asset because we've already paid it. We don't have to worry about paying it. So it's going to be 480. Okay. <clears throat> So now we're going on to F. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay, H. I'm going to scratch that out. Okay, so we're going to I. It's super tiny, so, okay. Received cash from clients for services performed. Okay, so what... What two accounts are we using? Cash. Pull up our chart. See, this is why having that chart. It's not going to be receivable because receivable is things that are owed to us. And we got paid cash, so it's not owed to us. But what did we get paid cash for? Services performed. So basically, we got paid for doing our job. What's another, when you're doing this, what's another word for that? Ma'am? Okay, so in our chart of accounts, is it accounts payable? No. Is it accounts receivable? We already said no because we already got the cash. Is an is an expense? No, because we received cash. So we can eliminate all the expenses because expenses are where we pay cash. Um, we've already got cash. Is it cleaning fees? Is it capital? 
Did someone personally invest in our business? No. Do we take something personally out of our business? No. It's an expense? No. Doesn't have anything to do with insurance. Not an expense. Not supplies, tools, van, or wage expenses. Okay, so which one of these fits? What did we get paid for? Doing our job. What is our job? Cleaning. Okay, she opened that cleaning window. So this is going to be cleaning fees. Fees, sales, revenues, they all mean the same thing. It's ways that we make money. Okay, so when we do cleaning services, we're either going to get paid a fee or we're going to call it sales. But when we're doing service, most of the time we call it fees. Okay, when we do have a service accounting, like where we perform services, detailing cars, cleaning windows, cleaning houses, mowing lawns, where we use, you know, our body to do things as opposed to just selling stuff again. Remember when we talked about that in chapter one. Anyway. So we receive cash from clients for services performed. So that is going to be cleaning fees, which is a revenue. Fees, sales, those are revenues. Make sure you remember those. So when we come over here, we received, oh, how much did we receive? I was talking so much, no, okay, $800. So we're going to come over here. We received $800 in cash. So that's a plus. We get it. We didn't spend that money. We got that money. And then we're going to come over here to revenues and put that in as well. Revenues are ways that we make money. Expenses are ways that we spend money. All right. So anytime it says we got paid for doing our job, it's going to be a revenue. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go through these next ones kind of quick. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit, but this is all the way through um, I. So if you have been doing with me this with me, then um, you know for a fact that the lowest score that you will get on this project or on this part of the project is 50 out of 61. Okay. If you do a few more, then you can get the 61 out of 61. Okay. But this is not the only part of this project. Okay. We look up here. We have the instructions and that was what we put here. These are our instructions. We have the accounts labels and the amounts descriptions. That's this, excuse me, that is this, all right? So we have the accounting equation, which is this right here, but now we have the income statement, the statement of owner's equity, and the balance sheet. These three, these four things are what gets graded. These are the instructions and what we're going to use to do that. These are the things that get graded for that, all right? On the end, I'm going to go ahead and click on, and each of these come up as a new pop-up block. So it's going to come up here. So once you have finished this, once you finish the accounting equation, the only thing that we're going to be interested in that point is going to be this last row, which is the balance. Okay, and so all of these you'll add up. If there's nothing there, then you won't, I mean, you'll just bring down, okay, so right now, if we were to do the balance here, it would be 600 plus 100, and that would be 700. Cash is going to be the only one that's going to be kind of um, a little more difficult because you have pluses and minuses, and make sure that you minus when you need to and you add when you need to, and it's going to be the balance. Now, this is in the PowerPoint on your in your weeks okay so in the powerpoint there's a reason i put these and those transactions the accounting equation all the way in the very back okay this is where it comes up with the guidelines for preparing this is page 64 of 69 okay so i'm talking about seriously in the back um and you can print this which is why i keep it here 
you can click this little area and you can print this and you can only print these pages if you want. I mean, like print 64 through 69. Um, but this is an example of exactly what it is, okay, and what you're going to be using. And an income statement is also called a profit loss statement or revenues um, expense statement. And that's exactly on your income statement. All you are dealing with is your sales, how you made money and how you spent money, your revenues and your expenses. No other accounts are going to be used. Your revenues and expenses. So you would add all of your revenues together. You would add all of your expenses together. You would take the balance of all of those revenues added together and you would subtract the balance of all of those expenses added together. All of your revenues minus all of your expenses. And it shows that here. Um, like I said, sometimes it's called profit and loss statement. Operating statement is another one. If you want to see one, Google it. Okay, I'm not afraid to let you Google things as long as you're putting the numbers that we're using in this problem into the right spot. Google an income statement and see what it looks like. Google a profit loss, see what it looks like. See what things are used on it. Um, so that's what that's going to be. Do we have the statement of owner's equity, the balance sheet, and those are the three things that we use. And it's color coordinated, okay? It's color coordinated here. So you can see that all of these are expenses. And you can actually like make this a little bit larger. It only fits in this little area here. I couldn't get it to expand, but you can kind of look. And this is how the profit loss statement is going to look. It's going to have the name of the company. It's going to say specifically income statement. And it's going to say for the month ending because you are actually measuring over the month from the 1st to the 30th or the 31st or the 28th. Okay, so this can say for the month ending. So when we go into our, when we go into the income statement, it's basically giving us a blank sheet and I'm going to expand this to where I can see all of it. Okay, um, right here. So it's going to say we do windows, which was the name of the business. It's going to say the income statement and then it wants us to label. So we're going to come back to this um, labels. And from here, we've already used all of these. So now that we're in the income statement, we don't need any of these. Now we're going to come down to the labels. And so right here for the month ending July 31st, I'm going to highlight that and copy it. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it as my label. Okay, because when you come back and you look, that's what it says right here for the month ending on the income statement. And that's what we're dealing with, the income statement. Then it wants me to label, so I'm going to come back oh, look and look at my labels. Okay, so expenses. A specific day or revenues. Now, what did I tell you income statement was? It is blank sub minus blank. So what is the first blank? <clears throat> it's revenues minus expenses. So my first label is going to be revenues and my second one is going to be expenses. All right, so revenues, I'm copying it. My first label is going to be ex revenues. My second label is going to be expenses. And you have to have that. Okay. Did you notice I put a colon on it? <laughs> And it said that it was wrong and it turned it red. So if you're putting things in the wrong spot, it's going to turn it red. And it does want things in a specific order. Um, I'm not terribly sure why. But if it turns red, just put it in a different order. And I'll show you. Because let's say I put wages expense.
and put that amount. Um, so here on the revenues, it wants that. And the only thing that we had that was the revenue was the cleaning fee. And you can actually go back to the accounting equation and see that the revenues, the only thing that we put in here was the cleaning fee. And in the chart of accounts, that was the only um, fee. Okay. Um, in expenses, however, we have advertising expense. We have the phone expense, rent expense, and wages expense. So we have four of those. Okay, so we're going to come back to this income statement. It wanted me to put an S, so it made it wrong if I didn't have cleaning fees. Okay, so we have wages expense. We had advertising expense. We had phone expense. And this is one of those other things where it's good if you have it printed out because you don't have to keep switching between screens. Okay, we had phone expense. What other expense did we have? Wages, advertising, phone, and rent expense. I'm sorry, my brain just kind of keeps stuff sometimes, so I don't go back and forth as much. Okay, but here we don't have this, so I'm not going to put these in, but this is where you would put the balances, you know, the ones that we got on this accounting equation. We would have the balances down here, um, and we would put them in revenues and expenses. We'd make sure they'd match because they want us to, buy, to divide this. So this one on 150, while we only did the expense and not a specific expense, when we do the income statement, we do need to divide it out that this 150 and that came from B was used for rent. Okay, so we would use 150 on rent. And if we paid rent anymore, I don't think we actually did. So I'm just going to put the 150 here on the rent expense. And now which side do we want to put it on? Here or this side? That's where we go back to the PowerPoint and look. Okay, so revenues are on the right side. And expenses are going to be on the left side for some of it. Okay, so... It gets kind of tricky. Okay, so I'm going to try not to be as tricky. So let's say the delivery fees for this or our cleaning fees, they're going to be over here. And I know it's actually going to be more than that because further down we get more money for cleaning. I think it's on the next one. So $500 would have been there. plus 800. Okay, so 800 and 500. So J and O. I'm going to actually put that in there. Okay, J. How much did I get in? How much did we do in J? Was it 500? And then O was 800. And I'm a little, okay, so, um, <clears throat> okay, so that balance would be 16 plus 5 is what, 21? Right? Just because you get check marks doesn't mean it's completely right. Do you see that? Because it gave me check marks here, but it didn't take away for the other things, and it won't do that until you submit it, but it won't give you the points. I mean, I still don't have, because I only did half of the transaction, so I didn't actually get any additional points for that transaction. Okay, so my balance for my revenues is 21, so that's what I'm going to put in the income statement, and you can see how it's red when I put that 150. That gave me the hint that it was wrong without me actually having to check my work. Okay, so I'm going to put that 21 
hundred in here. Okay. Now down here on my wages expense, um, okay, perform clean, and I'm just going to kind of go, like I said, through this sort of fast. Okay, so I paid wages up here. Do I pay wages again? Yes. So M, I pay wages for 15, for 150. So I'm actually going to put that on M, I paid wages. So I know that's not minus 150 in my cash because it says I paid those wages. My wage expense is 150. And you can actually cross out M because that's what we paid money or we paid cash for wage expense. Whoop. Um, we actually did this part of this and keep in mind that this is going to be two accounts. Okay, so it's going to be pretty much similar to this one where we paid cash for one and we paid an out for the other one. So go back up here and reference what we did on D in order to finish out the rest of these. Okay, um, so perform cleaning services for clients is on account. Um, that if they owe us money, that's going to be account receivable. So we got that $500 on, what is that? That's J, so we got $500 and it is accounts receivable. So I'm gonna put that here because it's we own, we own it. We haven't gotten paid for it yet. Oh, sorry, it's not cash because it's accounts receivable. Okay, so that is, and it gave me that X, so I knew that that was wrong. But yeah, okay, because I had it here and then it's a revenue and I'd already put the revenue there. So it's not cash on that one. Um, um, I want them to go through this kind of quickly. Okay, what are the other ones? So we did that one on account. We paid the phone bill for K. Okay, so that's going to be negative $40 in cash, and it's going to be our phone expense, right? Mom, you need a 12, right? Okay, so we paid the phone bill for $40. That's going to be cash and phone expense, all right? Um, so, K. I never remember what the amount was. $40. Okay, so K is going to be negative 40. Because remember, anytime it says paid, we do a negative. And then it's going to be an expense. That was the phone expense. Okay, and I know I'm going to put that in my income statement under my phone expense. It's going to be $40. My wages expense total is going to be $300 because remember we paid her $150 for the first half of the month and $150 for the second half of the month. So our total wage expense is $150 plus $150, which is going to be $300. Advertising expense, let's go look at our advertising. Paid for advertising, we paid $75. Do we pay any more advertising? No. So our advertising expense is going to be $75. And then the rent was $150. We paid the rent for July, if you see right up here, $150. Okay. I'm going to check my work to make sure that's wage expense. The balance is incorrect. Okay, so let me look. Oh, it's a hundred and then 150. So that's going to be, I was remembering it being 150 and 150 because I'm thinking if you pay the first half of the month and it's 150 or the second half is 150, shouldn't 
Anyway, so it's a hundred dollars here and then 150 here. So this is actually 250. That's where that check my work comes in. Okay, I'm gonna check again. Yeah. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I have all of these, and now I'm gonna add all of these expenses together and put it on the right side. Okay. So when you that way it's this minus this. And so 250 plus 150 is 400 plus 40 is 440 plus 75 is 515. We have, let's say, five, then we have seven plus five is twelve, plus five is seventeen. I don't know, let me look my, let me use my calculator real quick. All right, so seventy-five plus 250 plus 40 plus 150 equals 515. I was right. I just said that. Okay. So 500 or and 15. All right. And I forgot my little green check mark. Okay. So now I'm going to take this revenues minus expenses. So 2100 minus 515. One thousand five hundred and eighty five. One five eighty five. And then I'm going to check my work. And on this one, because I did have a couple of them, even though I checked my work, um, this is 62 out of 67 is what I got on that. Okay? So I got 15 out of 17. That's the points that I got for this one. Now, and I'm done with that one. In your statement instructions, be sure to complete the statement heading, refer the list of accounts, labels, and accounts for the each exact wording of text entries. A colon would automatically appear if it's required. Enter the amounts as positive numbers unless the amount is the calculation that results in a negative amount. So this is actually right here, a now amount description. And this, when you look at it down at the bottom, okay, so this is where our is coming off. So it wanted us to put total in totals expenses and net income or net loss. If it was a negative, it would have been net loss, but because it's a positive, it's net income. Okay, so we have, let's see, let's see if that'll give us more. Okay, so this is going to be total expense. Is that what it said? Total expense. And I'm going to see if that's on my list. Yep, right here. Total expenses, net income or net loss. So these are the amount descriptions. So now we're actually looking at these things right here and all of it kind of combined. So let me put that total expenses. And then because it is a positive, we're gonna call this net income it's not a net loss. And now I'm going to check my work. Woohoo! I got a 17 out of 17. Okay, yeah. so if y'all are doing this with me, then y'all will have that as well. Um, 
Okay, so that is how that works. So if you follow this, then you've got most of the account equation and the income statement. The statement of owner's equity is exactly what it looks like. Okay, and use this because this was my profit and loss statement. Okay, my income statement. If you go to the next one, it shows you the statement of owner's equity and it tells you, label it exactly like it shows you in this picture. Okay, use the labels exactly as it shows you in the picture and all of those will be, except obviously it will be someone else's name under owner and drawing. In this case, it'll be the Lisa Vorchak, whereas here it is um, Michelle Williams. Make sure this says for the month ended. I know we've used it before, but we can use it again. Um, it's color coordinated. So the blue, the green, the pink. Okay, so if you see here, this is that, I don't know, teal green. And we move that right down here in the net income for the month. Because basically the owner's equity is how much the business is worth. Okay, we started the business was worth this on the first of the month. These were our sales and revenues, and now it's worth this at the end of the month. Okay, that's kind of what the owner's equity is. So it gives so that green is going to specifically come from this. If you haven't done the income statement, you can't do the owner's equity. Then after we've done this. This right here, this blue, what is the amount that the business is worth at the end of the month, is going to come to the balance sheet right here. Okay, so in the balance sheet, this is exactly what it sounds like. It's the balance. So on this side is going to be the assets. Assets equals owner equity plus liabilities. So on this side are all the assets. On this side is the liability and the owner's equity and we want this to equal this we want the scales to balance assets equal that so if that is I mean if that balances out then you know you've got that correct but you want to label it exactly like this all right all of the assets came from here all of the assets are going to come from on here Okay, you'll have to come back to this accounting equation. These are all of the assets. These are all of the assets accounts. And you will use the balance down here. Okay, so by the time this is done, looking at this, the revenues and the expenses, this right here went on the income statement. Okay, so these two. The owner's investment, these two, and then all of this, so this owner's equity went on the statement of owner's equity. These are the four that you're going to put and use in there. These two came from the in him statement. And then this is going to be on the statement of owner's equity. Then assets and liabilities. These two are going to be more flushed out in the balance sheet, including the owner's equity. Okay, so step one is the income statement. Step two is the owner's equity. Step three is the owner's equity, liabilities and assets. So you have to do it in that order and just keep this PowerPoint pulled up so you can remember which one goes on which one. <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay, these are my revenues and my expenses. This is going to be my drawing, my with, you know, my, the name of the company at the beginning capital, the, if I made any withdrawing, personal withdrawings during the month, and then what it's worth at the end. And then this is assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Make sure you kind of look at this because it's going to want to have those labels exactly in order for you to get all of the amount. And then once that's done, that is the mastery problem. You have, and these are, so see the balance sheet looks like this. And always, like I said, I drag mine out. This corner, you can use it to drag out. So I always drag it out. It's worth 21 points. Okay, so this is how much this is worth. This is why you don't want to not do this. This one is worth 61 points. If you just did this, 
and you did it all and you submitted it, then you would get 61 points. The income statement is worth an additional 17 points. So 61 plus 17. Okay, so the income statement, the accounting equation statement is worth 78 points. The statement of owner's equity is worth 15 points. So let's add another 15 points. All right. And the balance sheet is worth 21 points. So let's add another 21 points. So this one problem is worth 114 points. If you don't do it, you've got a zero out of 114 for this, for the end of, end of chapter test. Okay, that's what we're doing right now. And remember, you have three times that you can close it, um, three attempts that you can do that. Um, remember, you also have the homework, and we went over that a little bit earlier, so if you missed that, go back and watch the videos, and it kind of walks you through what we were doing. Not all of them, but the first couple of them, and then the rest of them are similar to either what we did today or what we did last Thursday. Any questions? All right, do you guys have any questions over what I went over? All right. If you do, go ahead and um, hit me through, remind me. Um, not hit me, but you know, text me through, remind me. And I will get back to you to answer your questions. If you have, um, what is it? I have an iPhone. So if you have video where you can do the video, phone thing, then I can do that and you can show me your screen and I can walk you through that. If not, we can figure it out some other way. All right. Well, I will see you next Tuesday in Monticello in person and online for my people in McGee. All right. Thanks. Bye.